Hello and welcome back to my channel and welcome to Tokyo. This is a little extra video in here for you, aside from my daily diaries, because I thought I'd give you a little bit of a Olympic Village tour. I am currently in my bedroom. I'm sharing with Matty. Uh, I'm also sharing with, well, basically all of the male divers. How many of us are there? Six. Six. Six of us. So we've got a, a four bedroom apartment, two of us are sharing, and then a couple of us on our own. And if I don't know if you've been following any of the guidelines and things like that, we are allowed to arrive five days before our sport starts and then we have to leave within 48 hours of competing. So Matty and I compete on day two, so Matty will be going home on the day four. But myself and Noah, who are the platform divers, compete at the beginning, of, well, at the very end. So we are going to be staying for the whole duration and I get back to the UK on August 9th. Anyway, to the tour. First, I'm going to start with a view out the window. We've got a bit of a balcony. Nice view of the bay. That's off limits because of COVID, sadly, but look at that view. Lovely jubbly. It's nice and warm here as well. And then down there, we have the Olympic rings, which I'm sure we will have photos with later. Might even be the thumbnail if I can get in there because there's always a line to get photos in the Olympic rings. There they are. Look at that. Lovely jubbly. And now we are inside the bedroom and we've got Matty's bed's whoa, not whoa, major. Whoa, 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 what do you mean Matty's bed? What do you mean Matty's bed? That is your bed. Matty's bed. Okay, that's Matty's bed, Tokyo 2020. We get these duvets and we get to keep them and take them home as well, which is really nice. And then we've got my bed with some of the stuff all over it. We've got bags underneath. And these are the cardboard beds that I don't know if you've been hearing about. They're, they're saying they're anti-sex beds. I don't think that's the case. I think they just don't, they're trying to be eco-friendly. Should, should we test it out? And they're all, yeah, we can test it out. Right, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. But you can, we can fit two people on this bed. Oh, you, you oh, sat on my, oh, oh. Christ, sorry, I didn't even you feel it. Get off my toothbrush! Didn't even feel that. Hell yeah. Right. Here we go. Look, bounce up and down on it. It's strong. They not collapsed, so... We're all good. Uh, we've got our clothes hung up here. We've got the wardrobes and hangers and things like that. And then, I'm going to show you around some of the other rooms. One of the rooms. <laughs> There's Noah in the communal space. Fridge, freezer, tea, coffee, kettle. You know, we've got a whole like, PlayStation set up. There's two more bedrooms, there's Noah's bedroom and then Jack and Dan's bedroom in there. This is the loo. They've got all of these multifunctional things for the thing which, are, you know, gives you, makes sure you're clean. We've got a big old shower. And yes, we've tried, we can fit everyone in that shower at the same time. <laughs> Very true. Um, so then we've got another bathroom here. So we've got two bathrooms between us. This is a slightly smaller one, you know, again, functional. And then we've got round here, we've got a little recovery corner, which is nice. I must say that Team GB has definitely sorted us out with lots of the extra bits. I mean, we got these little, look at these dressing gowns with Tokyo 2020 on them. How cute are they? Nice and fluffy and thick. That's how we like it. And then we got like laundry bags that we can do in the laundry down in the basement, which I'll show you later. So yeah, that is our apartment. And we've all got our own little accreditation and keys. So that's what we've got to carry around with us at all times to make sure that we are who we say we are. We've got a little vending machine thing to be so like there's vending machines around the village to be able to get drinks and stuff like that so yeah i've got a little diary that i've been recording and helping towards writing the book that i'm doing yeah keeping tabs on all of that and we've got a little rory here as well but yeah that's our that's our apartment and i'm going to take you around the actual village now there's me oh, <laughs> in the lift covid reminders everywhere and when we're walking around the village so we always have to have our masks on when we are walking around, be COVID safe. So we just come out of the Team GB block and in a minute you'll see it behind us. Ooh, look at that, all the flags, all the flags. So behind there is the Team GB block and then you've got USA right next door and then you've got like I think I can see Kenyan flags up there so each um, block has a different amount of countries in Team GB is quite a big team we've got 376 athletes and then lots of staff as well so we're all staying in that block and I think we might be the only ones in there I think there might be two floors above us with some volunteers in it but you know it's quite a at the moment it's like the first couple of days so the village isn't too busy so it's quite nice to be able to have a chance to explore without too many people around you see those cars right there, those things, 
those are self-driving buses that can take you around the village and to do different things and they stop automatically and do all that things. I think there is someone manning it just as a safety precaution but they are fully automatic self-driving cars. Crazy. That right there is the main dining hall where everyone goes to eat. There's two floors and I'll show you inside all the different kinds of foods that they do but they have literally a bit of everything. We are not allowed to have our bags walking around the village in the food hall, so we have to take them off and drop them off. So, dropping off our bags as we speak. Going up the escalator to the food hall, and I think there is going to be lots of. I don't know how busy it's going to be. It's quite. I mean, it's the first couple of days, so it shouldn't be too busy. So this is just one of the floors and it's absolutely huge. So much space for activities. So we have to wear these lovely gloves as well. And then we have all of these dividers all the way along between every seat for extra COVID precautions are issuing to make sure that we're not spreading any germs. So everyone's got a little divider between them, if you can see it. Divide so far. And when you're done with your food, you have to go and put it in all the sea, all in the bins and stuff, and they have a different bins for different sections. You've got the recycling, there's the cutlery and all that kind of stuff, which you are looking at right now. Thank you. Food all. Yeah, the busiest food hall in the world. Yeah, it's pretty, it was pretty busy. It was but the so the food hall is open 24 hours, so you can come in and get food whenever you want. You know, breakfast, lunch, dinner available all hours of the day because everybody's competing at different times. You know, with drug tests and medal ceremonies and all that kind of stuff, you never know when you're going to get back to the village. So always handy to know, and you can always come back for food. You've also got stations around the village to fill up your water bottles because Tokyo has got very clean tap water, apparently, according to all the signs. So we're currently walking through the like international zone, essentially, which is basically like a. An area that's got like general shop, a uh, hair salon on that side. We've got the like gift store where I've already bought a teddy and a t shirt. And also, there's also a post office there where you can get stamps. And there's also like a phone shop to get your phone fixed. There's an ATM for cash. So basically, it kind of creates like a little mini village environment. So you've got everything that you're going to need and you don't actually have to ever leave. There are also a couple of cute touches that Team GB have done to make it feel a little bit more like home. Like this lovely little telephone box. So like I was saying, from the shop, got Robbie this little Japanese mascot -y t t-shirt, which is super cute. And I also got Robbie the Paralympic mascot, because that's what they had at the time. And I want to try and get both. So he's got the, the pink one is the Paralympic one, and then the blue one is the Olympic one. So gonna try and get them both but they were out of stock in the store and then the stamps I've collected stamps at every Olympic Games and look, look at these I'm a geisha and Matty is some kind of warrior and I got and I'm just gonna keep them because why not so we're now in the basement leaving team GB's little area and we are following signs to the laundry this way to laundry so basically in the basement it all connects all of the apartments together and there should be a little laundry section for us to be able to do our stir so basically i'm going to talk over what we just did basically we just scanned our accreditation and then after scanning your accreditation you hand over the laundry and they give you a little thing and then you come back and pick it up the next day or if you do it before 10 a.m get it the same day our deal Another thing that we have to do every day in the village is do a saliva test. And I mean, it's gross, but basically you have to spit in a tube and put it up to a certain line. And we're testing it every single day. Every day we have to put in um, a saliva sample. And they tell us that no news is good news because you only find out your results if you're positive. So everybody has to do that every day. So everyone is monitored constantly. And there is also, we have contact tracing on our phones so that if we come into contact or sit near someone in the dining hall, for example, with COVID, then we get a notification and we have to isolate. So that's another thing that we have to do here. Wow. Well, my alarm. And to get to all the venues, they've got lots of different bus stops. So they like, each bus stop goes to a different sporting venue. And then you've got to find your bus stop and then depending on what time in the 
of competition it is, they're either like every five minutes, every 10 minutes, every 15 minutes. So pretty frequent buses. And I think lots of them are electric, which is quite cool. Now we made it on the bus, just we went to the wrong bus stop, which is kind of classic of what happens when you get to the Olympics. We figured out where we're going, what we're doing, and now we're headed to the pool, which I can't show you the inside of, because then I had to video in there. So, nearly all the way through the village now. That's the pool. That looks really nice. So there is a, also a street in the village, as you can see behind me got a flag for every single country that is represented at the Olympics. I think there's over 200 and something countries that participate in the Olympic Games, so people from all over the world are here, which is kind of insane. And you can see around the village, everyone puts their flags up on the balconies and stuff, so you know where everyone's at. It's pretty cool. So there we have it, that was a tour of the Olympic Village. It's a pretty cool place, and I feel extremely lucky to be here, so that's our building right there. I'm gonna go in now and have a little chill, but yeah, don't forget to subscribe for more Olympic content. You know, I'm going to be competing very soon. So anyway, yeah, stay tuned. Peace out, love, and I'll see you soon. Bye.